Hello everyone and welcome back, Gaming with Priesty, Newcastle Jets in the AFL. We open up today's episode at home against Sheffield Wednesday, the Owls. And I've got to tell you what guys, after some indifferent form, the Jets were just on fire here today. You see Olsen scoring, or was it Olsen? He did a nice fake shot stop there. He's going on like he's going, but we'll check the replay here. And I'm not sure if it was going in, but Hutchinson, the hours defender here, having an absolute man, puts it beyond the goalkeeper. He gets the last touch, and he would be attributed the goal. We see here, um, just in the 12th minute, the hours trying to get themselves back in the game after a slow start. Um, Jacko, ever reliable in goals, comes up with a good save. And I think from the corner, we won the ball back, moved it quickly back down the field here. You see as we get in behind, Richardson gets in behind, plays it in behind. Hutchinson, <laughs> again. Oh, my God. Two own goals in the matter of less than 20 minutes. You see it here. To be fair to him here, there's not much he can do. It's a tap-in. If he doesn't do that, it's a tap-in to Olsen, the super sweet. But he sticks his foot out, hoping for a miracle. And poor Hutchinson, he has scored two goals down the wrong end within 20 minutes. And we'll just push further forward here. Um, the goalie comes up with a nice save here, but Clinton would recycle the ball, move it on the third gate from out. So, um, as another nice crack, but got knocked down. I was kind of hoping that we'd get the penalty there, but um, we didn't. And check that out. Oh, beautiful cross in there in the super sweep. They can't take that goal off him. And 3 0 at half time. Um, we see here we're fighting in their area though. Drops out to Castro there and he slams it into the crossbar. I tell you what, the dual stick didn't quite shake quite as much as when uh, Origi slammed the post a couple of week um, a couple of episodes ago. As you see, Sheffield try and get themselves back in the game, but the flag was raised. And we have ten minutes ago, there wasn't much happening. They create another another chance here. Jago comes up with another really smart save, and uh, yeah, I think that was nearly all all she wrote in that one. Yeah, three 0 victory. I've got to tell you, in the second half, I didn't really press too far forward. Just try to hold on to the ball, try and save energy. We've had a lot of fixtures lately, and I think that um, has contributed to us going on. On a run of not terrible form. You see there, we sit second place on the ladder with uh, a game in hand. Um, but yeah, an indifferent run of form. I see we either go out and we perform really well, we, we get big results like that, or <laughs> we just really struggle. There's kind of no in-betweens, or we dominate and just can't put the ball in the back of the net and move into the next game. It's Burton Albion. Sometimes in this game here, you just get a feel for when you can have a good day or when you can have a bad day. And I could tell you what, I absolutely felt this game here against Burton and Albion that we were going to have a very rough day at the office. And um, some, say, some like to say scripted. I just like to say it's real life. I mean, there's weeks when teams perform really, really well and then there's other games or other weeks where teams don't perform that well and um, fortunately for us this is one of the games where we didn't perform that well you now away from home Burton right down towards the bottom of the ladder um, you see why a team would get complacent and they've got everything to play for they're playing for survival here in league one um, so you can see how a club higher up on the ladder, could go away from home and think, oh, we'll, we'll just turn these boys over. But that's not the way it works. You've got to show up on the day. You've got to give every opponent the respect they deserve. Because if you don't, you're going to get punished. You see that? Oh, I was absolutely adamant that that was offside. When Morris puts the ball away, we kind of win the ball back. And then 
they stick a toe in and the ball just bounces straight back to him and uh unlucky for us that we couldn't couldn't stop them from scoring and I was adamant it was um I it was offside but you see there and we, I think that was Olsen who got in behind or maybe Lawrence got in behind and I just knew nah it wasn't our day that day and you see Duff have a nice shot on goal I mean we would get a bit a little bit lucky here I think it's Castro has a shot on goal and um yeah the ball bounced off off his foot into his hand not much he could do about it in real life I don't think that would be a handball but in the game it is we're not going to send it back. You see, Olsen, the super sweet, have actually been a lot better on penalties so far this season. And he puts it away there. Top bins on to his left-hand side of the goal. Goal is right. And I thought, you know, there's a sneaky chance we could possibly get back in this. The ball falls to Olsen. It gets cleared away again. And right here at the end, um, they come up with a nice defensive play. And that was all she wrote. A really frustrating day at the office. Way to Burton Albion, but I mean, good on them. They got the result that they were looking for um, to try and get them out of the relegation zone. But for us, um, in the chase for the championship, that could be massive for us. But um, chase for automatic promotion. I don't think it's the end of the world. I think we're still pretty comfortably in second. See here, we move into the next game, the episode away from home against Nottingham Forest in the fifth round of the FA Cup. And we have had some absolute amazing cup runs. And you see Gussie, he just stormed in the box, almost unopposed and smashed in the finish. And But we weren't in the lead for long and that was some absolutely silky skill moves there um and actually i don't mind that celebration because that was absolutely elite he beat three or four defenders there and then the finish as well and uh yeah he couldn't really complain about that we moved to the second half though and i tell you what whole second half it was all the jets all down the end and Samba in goals. Oh my lord. He was just pulling out save after save after save. And they were all really, really good. And I was just thinking, we're going to get bounced out of this cup. I mean, check this one out. Absolutely ridiculous. But right here towards the end of the game, would have one final chance. Or at least I thought it was our final chance. McGowan wins the ball. Samba makes another outstanding save, to be fair to him. But who is that? Jason Hoffman getting a run off the bench, I think. Or maybe Richardson, we gave him a rest of that game. But Hoffy comes up big late. Scores... The late winner, 2-1 in the fifth round of the FA Cup. And I think that puts us through for, to the round of 16 or the quarterfinals. I'm not quite sure. You see there, we have a look at the ladder. And we are in second place. Um, Luton Town seem to be going on a reasonable run of form. That coincides with our downtown in form. And we move into the next game against Hardball Town. And you can kind of see here in this game what I'm talking about, how up and down we are at home against uh, Hardapool in the relegation zone. Another team we really should be beating. And I've got to tell you what, the whole first half, we just got absolutely smacked. I mean, I don't know how we can play so well against Nottingham Forest in FA Cup there away from home against a team in a higher league with uh, much better players. Maybe it's just a matter of players stepping up to the occasion. Um, and then come in this game at home against Hartlepool and just get absolutely smashed. I mean, Jacko's probably got to be saving that, to be honest. But he didn't make the save. And oh, I don't know, what was that? 2-0 down. And I think, you know... Maybe we're just taking these games a bit too too lightly. I'm not sure. It's hard to point a finger on, but I'll tell you what. Things would only go from bad to worse here. And 3-0 down inside 
35 minutes in its Hartlepool town, and I gotta tell you what, I was absolutely fuming. And you know what? We were lucky it wasn't worse than than that, to be honest. Um, a really, really frustrating day. Or so it seemed, at least. We see here in the second half, Carlos Castro stormed into the box and an absolutely booming finish there on the right peg. And it would make the score 3-1. And I've got to tell you what here, I thought they played the ball through and I thought they're going to score here in 4-1 and it's all over. But they didn't. And we would go down the other end. Castro again stormed in the box. This time holds it up. Plays across to Olsen this time. And with 15 minutes remaining, it would the score would be 3-2. And you see here, with 8 minutes remaining, Castro gets in behind again. And from 3-0 down, the score is now 3 all, And all the boys get around him late in the game here. Hardpool would have a corner, though, and we would win it. Play it out to Olsen. All he's got to do is just play that ball over the top, and we are in behind, and wouldn't you know, he plays it into the man, and the game <laughs> would peter out in the end to a 3 all draw, which really we were lucky to have. Um, really frustrating way to end the episode, but it is what it is. Moving forward, hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll talk to you guys next.